So let's see how we can colorize and get it to look a bit more natural. In fact, we'll take this color photograph, I'll pull the color out of it, and we'll try to put some color back in, and therefore we can compare it to the normal uh, image. In order to be able to compare it, I'm going to work on either a duplicate layer or I'll only use adjustment layers, one of the two. Just to make it simple, I'll duplicate the layer. Therefore, the bottom layer will always be the original. We can compare it. I'm going to pull all the color out by just doing an adjustment that is called desaturate. Color's gone. And then let's put some color back in. Now, the first thing to do when you're colorizing any picture is you can click on your foreground color and pick a color to paint with. But if that's how you do it, or you're just kind of getting it off the top of your head, just kind of guesstimating, it's probably not going to look very good. So the first thing I would do is open any full color photo of somebody that has a skin tone that's similar to what it is you want to reproduce. And it doesn't have to be high quality photo, it doesn't have to be well composed or anything. All it needs is a reference color for you to look at. I'll just use part of her original skin as my reference. And what you want to do is grab your eyedropper tool and just click on that skin so that your foreground color right here is the color you're trying to somewhat simulate. Then there are two primary methods for adding color to a black and white picture. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you're not in the mode called grayscale. Because if you have a black and white picture, it might be in grayscale mode. And if so, you can't add any color when you're in that mode. If you're in grayscale mode, just go to this menu and choose RGB. RGB means full color, where you could add colors. Then here are the two different techniques. The first is, you could create a brand new empty layer. And on that brand new empty layer, you can grab your paintbrush tool and simply paint. And if I were to just paint, you know how usually it would completely cover up whatever's below. But wasn't there a menu right here we could play with? And wasn't there a choice within that menu that would allow this color uh, or whatever's in this layer to only affect the color and therefore it wouldn't affect the brightness? Well, that's one way to colorize. But notice how much color it's putting in the bright part of the image where that highlight is. It's a lot of color. And how much is being put in here in the dark part? It's a whole lot of color. And the color doesn't vary at all because I'm not varying what I'm painting with, but that's okay. We can still make this look a lot better. But before I show you how to make it look better, let me show you the one other method for adding color. Now, if that's too much, of course, I could lower the opacity of the layer. I'll just click on the word opacity and I'll drag to the left. And I could say, well, let's only put in a little bit. This is 70 or about 70%. That's looking like a colorized photo. So now let's try the other method. I could instead use an adjustment layer. I'm going to cheat here and make a selection of where I've painted, just so I don't have to create the selection ahead of time. And I'll go to Hue and Saturation. In Hue and Saturation, there's a checkbox right here called Colorize. And if you turn on Colorize, it will force red into your picture, usually red. The default setting is red, but since the last color I had is my foreground color, uh, was not red, it chose something slightly different than it. But usually it'll look like this. Then you could move the hue slider to control the basic color that's being applied. And you could move the saturation slider to control how strong it is. And that's the other method for adding um, color. But with both of those methods, you usually end up with way too much color in the bright and dark areas. So let's figure out how to fix it. First, let's fix this one. I think it looks ridiculous. <laughs> to fix it, we're going to go down to the letters FX, and we're going to choose blending options. You remember this? And what we're going to do is it's not really going to matter which of these two we um, work with, although in this case, I think the bottom one is, is actually what I'm going to use. And what I'm going to do is pull this in, and what that's going to do is say, Take the areas that are in this brightness range in the underlying image and let them show through or break through whatever's in this layer. 
So this layer is applying color to the image, and if I bring this over, it says let the bright areas of what's underneath just simply break through. And if I get it over far enough, do you start to see the highlights in her skin breaking through? Well, you no longer see color on them. Well, I don't want it to completely disappear there. I just want it to be lessened. And that's when you go over here to the slider and you split it in half by holding down Option, Alt, and Windows and pulling on it like this. That means slowly fade out. Don't abruptly break through. Sure, right here, start to disappear, but then disappear less and less and less as we get over. So now I'm going to mess with these and see if I can get it where it more gently goes into those highlights. Just bring this over. And can you tell that less color is being applied to that bright highlight? If you want to see without it, I'll turn off the preview checkbox. Before, do you see how much color is being applied? After, do you see it's lessened? And now I'm going to do the same thing in the dark part of the picture by moving it to the other side over here. You can split it apart at the beginning if you want. You just have to hold Option to get it to split. And I'm going to bring this over, and I'm looking now at this area, the dark area. I'm going to bring it over until I see the color to start to go away. And you can even have these cross. And I can bring the other side over. There we go. It's not too far. Not used to having these perfectly cover each other up. Like that, click OK. Now that's making it so we have a lot less in the shadows, a lot less in the highlights. And now the main thing we need to do is adjust the opacity to control how much color is going into the image and fine tune the color itself. And this is where if I had a full color image, I'd put it right next to this and compare the two. We have paint in this layer, but I can adjust the color of the paint by going over here to hue and saturation. The hue slider will control the basic color. And I can shift it around to say what color might look best on her particular skin. And then the opacity will control how strong it is. And I can do the exact same change if I was using the adjustment layer. If I have that, instead, I go again to the letters FX, choose blending options, and I do the exact same thing. to say don't apply so much to the shadows. And then I can work on that adjustment, which is that layer is active. I, the adjustment should be right up here, and I can fine tune exactly what color is being applied and either saturation or opacity, either one, will control how strong it can be. And the other thing that I find to be useful is the problem with using the adjustment layer approach is you get one color across the entire area. If you use the painting approach, it can be useful to use different colors here where she would have a tan line, where she wouldn't be as bronze in color, so I could paint in a different color there. Uh, and use a different color where she is more deeply tan uh, to put it in. But if you don't use the blending modes where you can limit where the color shows up, then you end up with way too much color here in the dark part of the image and way too much color in the bright.